Welcome to the Ohio Arts Council's Rife Gallery programming series for our current show, Black Life as Subject Matter 2. This exhibition is produced and circulated by Ebonia Gallery in Dayton, Ohio. Today, we're thrilled to present artist Cynthia Lockhart. As a brief reminder, everyone tuning in today is in listen-only mode. Please feel free to utilize the chat function to ask questions. We'll be sure to get to them during the Q&A portion of the hour. Next, live captioning is available for this artist talk, and you can access that by clicking on the closed caption icon and selecting show subtitle. Also, please keep in mind that because we're presenting from separate locations, there may be some variation of bandwidth. So if one of us freezes up or the sound fluctuates, thanks in advance for bearing with us. And lastly, to get everyone comfortable, please go ahead and click on that chat function, say hello, and let us know where you're tuning in from. Okay, thanks everyone. Now to you, Cynthia. Hi everyone, Cynthia Lockhart. I'm excited to be here today. Um, uh, thank you to uh, Kat and uh, uh, Rife Gallery for inviting me to this uh, uh, opportunity to share with you and share some of my artwork that is in this fantastic exhibit. So we're going to get started with just uh, mm -hmm. not moving. I'm pressing my key. Go ahead and click with your mouse onto the PowerPoint and then you'll be able to use your keys. There we go, there we go. I'm beginning with, uh, can you see a black line going across or am I the only one that can see that? You're the only one that can okay, see that. Okay, great. I wanted to start out with saying, um, singing praises to, to my mother, Jerry, um, because uh, she is the, the conduit that helped the creativity that runs in my family came from her. And she is this lovely lady standing over at the side. She was everything fashion design. She was uh, everything interior designer. She, she made curtains, she made drapes, she, she upholstered fabric and what have you. And the dress she's wearing, she, she, she made. Uh, this is me when I was uh, a young thang <laughs> and I was going to U University of Cincinnati as a fashion design student. So this is one of the, the outfits that I have pull, pulled together. And right up here is a, a, a picture of my mom here, my sister Renee, who does lovely jewelry. I'm wearing her jewelry right now. And so she is also creative. And, and that, that's me going through one of my phases with my hats and what have you. But creativity runs in the family and that's, that's where this whole inertia and this energy uh, came for, for me. First, I wanted to become a fashion designer and I did so. And I did so by uh, going to um, the University of Cincinnati. And so what, what we're looking at right now, is gonna be a, just a little collage of what it looks like and what it, what it feels like to do a design board. But I'll talk over my fashion design uh, experiences a little bit here. And then I'll just go over the storyboard with you. But again, walking into that fashion world was my, my idea was to uh, go to, my, my mom says, what do you wanna do? I said, I wanna be a fashion designer and I want to go to Paris because that was the thing, you go and study in Paris. And so what happened with that was, and so she said, well, why don't, we, why don't you apply for University of Cincinnati? They've got a very famous uh, fashion program there. And I said, sure, I'll apply, but I wanna go, want go to Paris. So what happened is I applied at University of Cincinnati and I got accepted. And she said, well, you got accepted at UC. So that's where you need to be going. And of course that she, you know, she got her way basically. So at the uh, University of Cincinnati, it's a phenomenal fashion design program. Um, I, that, I, I did my undergrad there. And what we were taught was the fashion design process. So behind this, uh, uh, this artist, there are layers of other iterations of uh, work that have helped me to become who I am today. So the fashion design process really consists of researching and coming up with inspiration and building a storyboard of what, you, what you're thinking about when you're doing a project, what you're thinking about working on. So you're pulling various fabrications, you're pulling various here, various beads and sketches and sketches and sketches upon sketches. And so that's what you do in that whole fashion design process. That is very much a part of what my story is. Maybe other quilters don't come from that, but I have to come from what I'm informed from. And also within that framework of uh, becoming a fashion designer, I got this crazy love for handbags. 
So that was one of the things that, that, I, that I did as I pursued um, uh, handbag design, and that was uh, nurtured by a professor um, uh, from the University of Cincinnati, Grace Meacham, who was all things leather. So when she showed me about leather, I thought, oh, I've got to do bags. Um, behind this story also is, that was my educational background, but behind the story is I graduated from University of Cincinnati. And of course, I had kind of forgotten about going to Paris and the allure was then to go to New York. So my allure was to go to New York and you know become this you know uh, this 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 girl that went out on the middle of the street. There was a, a actress that went out. I forgot what her name is, and she was going to conquer New York, and that was me. So I decided to 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 go to New York to pursue um, a career in uh, a fashion design. Did so so much so that I went into business, and it wasn't pursuing fashion; it was pursuing handbag design. I can't explain how that happened, but it happened. And I was the new hot girl on the street that did an incredible um, handbag design. Uh, uh, and I had a, a wonderful career in, in, in that area. So all of those factors informed me. Each step that I took, I learned more and it energized me and informed me to step onto the next step. So in and having moved from New York, uh, coming back to Cincinnati, Ohio, I was put in touch with this wonderful queen Dr. Carolyn Maslumi, who is uh, the head of the Women of Color's Quilting Network. I had come back to Cincinnati and I had also connected with an organization called Arts Consortium in the city. And that was of all these talented uh, artists and everyone were painters, they did all of this, but nobody really did handbags, I had a handbag. Somehow I ended up uh, being on the board and one of the board members asked me, Cynthia, I'll tell this story and then I'll get back to Carol and Dr. Maslumi pretty quickly. He said, Cynthia, I want you to do an art show. And I'm like, what do you mean? I, I, I make handbags, I, I, I have garments. He said, think about it and come back and do a show. So I did, I, I came back and I, I, I proposed a show, um, talked to a friend of mine and we both collaborated. And I literally had, um, I literally did croquis, which are uh, sketches of fashion design and I incorporated my handbags uh, in it. And so since it was so new and so fresh, everybody wanted to buy that. And I put no prices on my items because I was not willing to sell them. So even to this day, some people that are collecting my artwork always say, you know, I wanted to buy that piece from years ago. But meanwhile, from the Arts Consortium, that's where I met uh, Dr. Uh, Carolyn um, Maslumi. But I do have to credit, Tom Phelps was the person who called the artist out in me. So Dr. Maslumi uh, was interested in uh, furthering her connections with the Women of Color Quilting Network because she had not, she lives in Westchester here in uh, near the city. And she put out a proposal and called artists. We went down and uh, that's how I met her. And um, I ended up joining her organization and the, the rest is history. She is a phenomenal lecturer, mentor, phenomenal artist. Uh, uh, she is just incredible. And uh, she has made a, a way for um, African uh, American women, people of color, to have a, <clears throat> a large voice in the quilt market. She is responsible for that. So I, I can never give her enough praise. And of course, she is an incredibly talented artist as well. Faith Ringo, so she's a, so Masumi was a mentor. Faith Ringo, was um, um, uh, a, a person that I, I just kind of adored her work. And not that I did work like her, like her work, but I adored her work. And what happens is, is when Dr. Maslumi gives a call out for a show, she will give you an, an overall description of what is wanted. And uh, in this particular show, um, it was, we were honoring Faith Ringgold and I, I selected her, uh, select, selected her, and I did a piece called "I Believe I Can Fly." And so this picture shows you the dynamics of why um, um, I, you'll, you'll see the, pic, the uh, artwork in just a few minutes is uh, how she created this uh, skyscape on top of a roof of this family. They would go up on their roof, and that was that 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 tar beach they call it up on top of the roof. And these are pictures, this is one of the, the many um, uh, Tar Beach uh, uh, famous pictures that Faith Ringgold has done. And she is just a, a, a tower of strength and has been here, been many years making art. And her art was using the, she paints on canvas 
and she also uses the quilting technique. So her work is phenomenal. She is like number one today. She's being featured in a, a new show in New York and it's breaking all of the records. So I need to go up and see her. Anybody that goes to New York, please go and see Faith Ringold's show. Another person that I just love dearly who inspires me is Romero Bearden. Um, he is a, 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 a collage mixed media artist and uh, his, his work is just deep and precious and soulful. And um, I, I love his uh, gestures um, so that he's not doing a typical face, he's doing an abstracted face. My work is ex abstract in nature. And so I love the way he tells the stories and you see everything that you need to see and feel by looking at his work. Uh, this one is a man uh, 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 baptizing someone and there we see the church over here. And this is a wonder, wonderful mother and, and child like the Medea. So uh, his work is phenomenal. He uses the, again, the uh, cu cubism, abstractionism, and that is what my work um, entails. Another person who inspires me is uh, Sam Gilliam. I, I have been seeing his work for, for many, many years. And of course, I was attracted by the draping. The draping, uh, again, is one of the things that I learned while I was at University of Cincinnati. And I was quite good at draping. Again, there was the professor, um, uh, Grace Meacham, who also taught the draping class. So, and um, I fell in love with, with his work and followed him over the years. He, again, is a seminal artist and uh, has, is uh, having a renaissance right now with his work as well. This is the piece that I, that I did to, to, to reference Faith Ringgold. And it's, I believe I can fly. And this basically has to do with having no boundaries on what you intend to do, having no boundaries. Nothing is gonna hold you back from where you need to go. So if you believe you can fly, that's what you go for. If that would be your particular goal. I'm not saying that we're gonna physically fly our bodies out, but sometimes we, we go into a state of mind that we need to just escape and go to where we want to be. So I, I believe that I can fly, that nothing is impossible for me to go after or for you to go after if you believe. Um, uh, this piece was uh, uh, done, your, your boat is your, is your protest and we are, are using it as, as our, our cover page here. So this is a very important uh, thing in our, in our country right now, the, the right to vote, the right that every individual who qualifies has the ability to vote and that their vote is to be counted. We are going through an, another uh, a time uh, in, in, in our country where, where, our, where we have to understand that everybody has the right to vote, no, where, no matter your color, no matter your configuration, no matter what your income is. And it is a very positive tool that everyone should take advantage of. So the, what I want is, is that your, your voice is your protest. So when you're voting for something, you're agreeing with that. So, the protest is, is that it's your protest to lift up and raise up your voice so your voice can be counted. So everybody should take that right to vote. Um, I'm not telling you what's in, what's in the quilts, but what you're seeing are the big eye. The big eye is actually um, uh, a symbol of you are being watched, okay? So you're being watched with everything that you do. So if, you, if you're going, if you are going to, um, to vote, it's, it's being seen by every, everyone. And the eye and the symbols of the gems and the stars on, on the eye means that it is a precious, a very precious, precious thing to be able to have the right to vote. In terms of uh, African-Americans, we many years ago did not have the right to vote. We would have to go into a, a particular area and they would have a, a basket of uh, stones or marbles and you would have to guess how many marbles uh, they had in, in the basket in order for you to be able to vote. So they play games. So we're not playing games in that way. We're playing games in other ways now in, in terms of redistricting, but take advantage of voting is what it boils down to. This is another one. I was, I was so enthralled with the, the imagery uh, of the other piece. I decided to continue it uh, when, when um, George Floyd was killed. So this one is crying out. Again, enough is enough, stop the killing. When George Floyd passed and we all had to witness that whole fiasco 
from all over the world when members and, and countries, other countries came in and, and helped support this, uh, this call of uh, enough is enough. In this instance, the I is uh, symbolizing that I see you, we see you. So we see you, if you are doing something incorrect and improper, you're not, you're not really gonna get away with it. You may get away with it um, here and now, but perhaps later on in life or when you pass over, you will not get away with it. That's how I feel about it. This uh, face of Joyce, George Floyd is right here and it just shows him looking upward uh, to heaven. It also shows the various different faces and characters of, of many people all over the world. And down here, we have uh, um, another person who has fallen and is sort of floating on the back Black Lives Matter banner. banner. So Black Lives Matter, all lives matter. All lives matter. Uh, this is uh, a few of the items that are coming up right now have a lot to do with what a lot of us went through uh, during um, our, our COVID in invasion. I call it pandemic blues. One of the things that I am totally excited about is music and movement and um, uh, uh, the, the ability to uh, delve into a subject matter. And so with this particular one, I did a, a um, in, the, in the background, I did screen, a screen printing and uh, uh, dripping of uh, paint on the back. And then I added elements over the top using a lot of different beads and what have you. So one of the things that I also love is music. And so you'll see themes of, of music in my artwork. You will see, see themes of depth and you will see themes of um, spirals. So I also use circles because circles represent the cells which we are all created from. If you are alive, you came from a cell. There was that cell that was the beginning of, of your life. So that cell and that circle is very powerful to me. And I do use it throughout my artwork. And um, it does, the cell itself has an aura and has a feeling and a meaning. And I, and I really enjoy using it. And I really enjoy people responding to it as well. So this one was, uh, is Pandemic Blues. And um, again, we're, we're not out of it. We're still swirling around and we are looking forward to being past it. This is um, another piece that was done uh, uh, during um, the pandemic. Uh, again, some of the things that happened uh, to me and a lot of people are, what's gonna happen? Am, am, I, gonna, am I gonna survive? Am I gonna get COVID? Um, and there was that fear of, of being out of control of what was going on around you. Again, you, you have this swirl of the circles and you, you, you have the Bonafina lines coming down, creating that sort of kinetic uh, uh, connection. What I have here are these three faces that are facing the future. And so you have one here with eyes wide open and this figure has eyes, eyes wide open. And this one here has no eyes wide open because I mean, that is that energy that hold, holds you back of what is gonna happen to me through this uh, pandemic. So it's called facing the future. In addition to the, uh, to the pandemic of the COVID, we also have um, um, a pandemic of climate change going on as well. So you do feel that, that whole piece of what is uncertain on a given day, what will happen uh, in, a, in a storm uh, uh, and how it will affect us as humans. Okay, would like to tell you that pr primarily the background, this is another one, this is called facing the future. So again, I have my swirling circles and those swirling circles are again, that feeling of, of being uh, taken up and, and that feeling of being um, turning and swirling and what have you as if you're in a, in a storm. So when you're facing the future, sometimes you don't know exactly where you're going and you don't know how to navigate. And so that's what this one is feeling like. Sometimes you just need an anchor to hold on to something. And I use this picture to, just, to depict somewhat chaos as we face the future, because basically that's what it felt like. It felt like a big swirl. It felt like it was out of control. And this is what this uh, piece is de depicting. So uh, silk screening in, in the background, hand, hand painting, 
um, uh, quilting aspects here, um, also using um, uh, beading uh, and stitching. This one is called Heartbeat. Heartbeat. The, the heartbeat is the soul of, of the spirit that we have in us. The, the heart controls the energy of the blood that pulses through, through our veins. So this, this, heart, this heartbeat is, is just depicting a, a, a normal heartbeat in a person and also the configuration of, of the soul. I, my, my name is Cynthia Lockhart. So I have been fascinated with hearts for, for years. And this is just one way of expressing how integral that heartbeat is, how integral that soul is that each and every one of us have within us. Um, what we choose to do with um, the part of the heart that, that we control is one thing. And, and as you get a little older, it kind of gets a little out of hand, uh, but, but you do have control of who you are and how you wanna be personified within your heart, how you wanna let your heart shine to certain people. Again, uh, mixed media uh, fabric, uh, draping details, beading and piping on heartbeat. Uh, this one is called Juxta Position. And I did this one uh, a couple of years before the pandemic. This one uh, right here feels like to me, uh, some, someone who is a different person. You may know a few people who are kind of, you look at them and you say, oh, they're kind of out there. We don't, I don't know, I'm not sure wh where they are, who they are. Well, I say to those people who are kind of out there, they are the leaders and the shakers and the movers and the makers. They're the ones who dare to jump out before anybody else jumps out. They are the, the ones that set the trends and they are the ones that kind of shake it up a little bit. So that one is juxtaposition. And I just love that one because it could be, I could be talking about myself in the juxtaposition. I've done many things in my life and I've traveled and I've had exciting experiences and I've just not been afraid to jump in and dive in. So with juxtaposition, it's I dare you to do it. Check it out. If you're thinking about doing something that's a little bit different, um, um, when I say a little bit different, I'm, I'm talking about something that you have a fear for or whatever. Don't let that negativism slow you down from doing what you need to do. Jump on out there and uh, give us a little dance and a little shout. So this one's juxtaposition. What I did here was I came up with a little, another, a new treatment here. I call it scaling, so overla overlapped fabric. This has quite a bit of depth there. So most of my work is three dimensional. I don't see artwork as just a uh, one entity on, on the wall, I see it as, as a part of who we are. I see it as a three dimensional item, juxtaposition. This piece is called Journey to Freedom. Um, it was in a art exhibit uh, at the Taft Museum at University, um, the Taft Museum here in Cincinnati, Ohio. And uh, it, it is, it is a, just a phenomenal piece. I actually, I did it on a call and I, I, I did a, um, I, I made the, the initial design for a call, but it did not make it in that call. And it, it's just a strong, strong depiction of representing uh, slavery. We have these two folks who are running to freedom. And there you're looking at the signals in the Underground Railroad where you have a candle there that you're supposed to look for the candle in the window that um, will, will take you to a, a house that you'd be safe in. They ran in the, in the night where you see a star here and you see our moon in the background. And uh, so you just, you see these two folks here and they have a little bit of food in their bag. You see the river line here. And I also did use a vintage quilt that actually has some tears in it because it was a rigorous, scary, um, you did not know what would happen, but those who ran were so brave and I'm so proud of them um, because we're, we're still here because of it. So this one's called Journey to Freedom. It's probably one of, one of my uh, favorite quilts. It's huge, it's very large. I mean, you could put uh, several people standing here and about four people standing here in front of it, but it's quite large. 
Journey to Freedom. Um, this was in the, the same show at the Taft Museum. And um, actually Journey to Freedom was what the, the title of the show was. And so here we see three travelers and it's called a runaway swing low, runaway swing low sweet chariot. And so it was said to be that uh, there was also singing, they would have folks singing songs to give you a signal whether it was good to run or not. And swing low sweet chariot was one of those songs. So in, I envision these three, three folks singing swing low sweet chariot while this runner is running through the woods towards freedom. Again, you see my, my circles of grace and my spheres that would protect them as they ran. And then of course you have the, a tree here and, and attributes of flight here. So these are silk screened, uh, printed, draped fabrications uh, for Swing Low Sweet Chariot. Also a very large quilt. This is an, another shot of it with a lot more light. The other, the other uh, photography I did, so sometimes you need to get a professional photographer to do things, but this is a, a backdrop of a Swing Low Sweet, Sweet Chariot and um, Runaway. And then I have folks in the gallery enjoying themselves. And so what you see on the background, you'll see another uh, picture coming up is um, some, some dyed and painted fabrication that, that I use as a backdrop. And you're seeing a little bit of this piece that I'll show you now. It's called Honoring, um, Honoring Our Ancestors Gallery View. So here's the gallery view of that. What the, what the intention was, was searching and thinking about freedom. So I did an installation uh, where, whereby I, I asked the viewer to write down how did they feel about freedom. So these buckets filled up like four, four different, these baskets filled up four different times because we had so many visitors and, and teachers brought children in. So these, this, this wonderful um, uh, uh, present uh, call and response, um, I can just grab here something to possibly, I asked them what was freedom is. And I got a few responses and um, freedom means that, uh, freedom means that you honor God on this one. Freedom is the ultimate goal for all people. Freedom is being happy. And so I, there were tons of responses from here and I really probably need to do something from them. Freedom to me means taking power to choose any, every, anything and everything I desire to do and to be. So it revealed quite a lot and I need to do a, a follow up on that. I got hundreds and hundreds of responses for this, um, this uh, totem that I did for that particular show. In that same show, this piece called Jazz on My Mind again, I told you about my background with music and with singing or what have you, just a little bit. I am just, I just love the jazz music. I love the rhythm. I love the riff. I, I love the shake. I love the shimmy. And so on here, you see a, a borderline that is uh, resembling piano keys. And then you see the horns moving and then you see the riff movements here. And so I did a lot of um, intricate details here. I did some slide over overlays here and some horns uh, that are uh, singing and screaming and, and moving. It actually looks like it's moving to me. And here is a close up on jazz, jazz on, on our mind. Jazz is one of the major um, uh, developments that uh, African-Americans contributed to our, our country. And it was one of the things that came out and really helped to unify our country, not only in America, but the jazz music uh, uh, went all over the world, and that was known as one of the major contributions of African Americans. So we're so very proud of, of the jazz music, and I just love it. This one is uh, cre created uh, to, to be me, and this artwork um, I drew on uh, inspiration from the Universal Declaration of Human Rights uh, ratified in 1948. 
It represents the first global expression of rights to which all human beings are entitled. And uh, this, again, it was motivated by Article 28. And uh, it states that everyone is entitled to a social and international order in which the rights and freedoms set forth in this declaration can be fully realized. Everybody, we are born to dwell on this planet together and to contribute our talents and our gifts and to make mankind and use, make mankind on our own terms, in our own ways, presenting our own selves. So this is this was the the quilt uh, that represented the the um, the the, you know, the energy of movement. It represents a free spirit, and it celebrates the possibilities of the power of creativity. And this piece was um, is in the Smithsonian collection in Washington D.C. in the Renrick Gallery, and that happened this year. And um, so so happy that yes, the Rife Gallery helped me make that announcement. Actually, they made the first announcement that that happened. So I'm very excited to have a piece of art artwork in the Smithsonian. Um, I do, I ever so often I have the, the possibility and any artist that has the possibility of doing a commission, I say, go for it. It's a really a different um, uh, thing because you're not, you're really collaborating with a team and you're not the only one that's in charge when you're working on, on a, uh, a commission. And it's quite wonderful actually to, to not being working, working solo, but to be working with a group of people going towards the, the, the same goal. You get to do basically what you wanna do, but there are rules that you have to follow. But if anybody has not gone out for commissions, they are wonderful. So I, I, I was, uh, uh, had the opportunity to, to be accepted for a commission at the Cincinnati Children's Hospital. And this piece was called Breakthrough. So you see my circles again. And they, they built a new building and they had um, a, a theme of, of breakthroughs and uh, discovery. Uh, and, um, and so my quilts were created to, um, to give a, a portrayal of that following. So this one says inspire, empathy, inquire. So these are, they, they, inspire, they are inspired to cure and empathy with the patients. And we basically had to go through a series of meeting with patients, meeting with doctors, meeting with staff, and it was very informative. And it, it did lead me to do artwork that was quite different. And this is another piece, it's called Transform and to lead. So this probably meant I was working with a particular team and these are some of the words that they gave me to use that are I derived from their presentation. And uh, this one is cooperate, being connected and team. Of course, we all thrive for that. But it was a wonderful project. What it did for me is um, my favorite color is black. And so they told me you can use any color but black. And I was like, oh no, I'm not gonna believe that. But I uh, kind of fell in love with this blue here and it stuck with me as I went forward. Okay, this piece is called Dancing Colors. And uh, this is a piece that, that, I, that, that I did to, uh, to honor my daddy. He, he was a dancer and uh, he was a very creative dancer. All he loved doing is, well, he loved doing other things but he loved being the center of attention um, at an event while dancing. And this just uh, reminds me of him, his uh, enthusiastic spirit and his ability to, 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 to dance and to show his creativity through um, that aspect. It's called Dancing Colors. Um, this one is called I Am Still Here. So this story is just a little bit different, kind of personal. Um, when, I was, when I was in New York, I stayed in New York for 13 years. And then I decided that I, I wanted to leave New York. It was just uh, a, a chaotic time. I was in business in New York and it was, I had shipped out, I was doing a handbag line at that particular time. And I had shipped out a collection of, of handbags to multiple, multiple companies. And I was not receiving the, um, the I could not receive my, I could not receive payment on those. And so I had to decide whether I stay in New York. I had a team of people. I had a staff of people. I had to get rid of the staff and it only was me. And I had to go through, what do you want to do, Cynthia? Do you want to stay in New York or do you want to go back home? And so I'm still here, 
was was me saying, I'm, I'm going to do something. I'll make a decision. And the decision was to leave New York and come back to Cincinnati. And so I had to hear in my ear, I'm still here and I'm still me, even though I'm leaving the city that I ran to. What I didn't realize is going back to Cincinnati was going to be so wonderful and so delicious. I did not know. I, ch I chose to leave New York and go back to Cincinnati. And in doing so, I ended up um, uh, having a career as a professor at University of Cincinnati, which was the last thing I wanted to do, by the way. Um, but it ended up being, uh, as, as we say, good for my soul. And uh, I'm so happy that I did it. Um, uh, being a professor at University of Cincinnati provided me access to the, to the world. I traveled the world. I traveled the world through fashion design, obviously, but I continued to do so uh, for, for my students and for the projects that I did at University of Cincinnati. I'm retired now. So as I say, when, you, when, you, when something first happens, you don't know how it's gonna happen, how it's gonna configure. But if you, if you keep on keeping on, you'll get to that goal that you wanna be here. So this is a very, very precious one uh, to me. I'm still here. Now, this is a, a, a piece of work that, that Dr. Maslumi inspired me. This is how I feel about how she, her, her statue, how she, how she looks, how she protects uh, her quilters, how she fights for her quilters, and how she makes things happen. And she means it. When she says something, she means it. And so this was called Mother Earth. So I thought that was um, a very, um, that's what it, when I finished this piece, I was like, this this, this looks like this statue, this, this woman who represents all women who will fight for her family, who will fight for whatever she needs to fight for. And that she is a, she is statuist and she is beautiful and she is from Africa. Okay, so this is Mother Earth. Uh, this is a piece called Woven Together, and um, you, you see I'm still using my, 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 uh, my swirling shapes, my circles, and it really is a piece that was a commission uh, for the University of Cincinnati from the African American Culture Center, and it just celebrated the students there and the faculty there um, because they were having such great uh, programs and uh, um, at the University of Cincinnati and helping students to get through all of the very rigorous programs and majors there. And so they were bound together and they, and, and they just worked so well together. I was very honored that I was asked to do um, a commission piece. And this is one, one of my favorite pieces. And especially because um, uh, uh, I've got, I had a little student involvement as well. How are we on time, Kat? Are we good? I'm great. It's 12.38. Okay, great. This one is called Mr. President. And Mr. President is um, Barack Obama. This, this is how I felt. This is my way. And also this was another call from Dr. Carolyn Maslumi. Again, she, she gave uh, a ter terrific show venues. And this was an opportunity to have a, to create a piece that exemplified the spirit of Barack Obama. And, and not only was it the spirit, it was how I felt also when, when he became Mr. President, the, the exuberance, um, the, the, the drama, the thrill uh, of it, it when, he, when, when he became the, the president of the United States. So that was my homage to, to him. And um, I love it. This is one of my favorite pieces. Uh, this is a piece also from uh, a call from Dr. Carolyn Maslumi, and this is Nelson Mandela's Prince of Peace, and uh, this de de depicts uh, Nelson Mandela because he was a Prince of Peace, and he did so much for his country, and, and again, I did a, a sculptural shield, which is a very African in nature, and then I did, you see a drop, there's a, a drop here, this whole face can be lifted up. So it has the depth there. And so I do a lot of uh, uh, depth in my work and I create a lot of uh, new concepts uh, in, in fabrication. That's just who, who, who I am and what I do. And again, we have my abstracted shape. Uh, this piece is called Dance of Hope. And uh, Dance of Hope uh, is an extraordinary piece and it is large in, 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 in scale, it's very large. 
and my story here is you have um, when you're striving for something and when you when you have to sometimes go beyond what is necessary, there, there's a certain sort of standard or a casual way of doing things. Sometimes you have to make a little noise and you have to pull yourself away from something. So this inertia that you use to go to that next level is, is extraordinary. And you have to make that noise. So that's what this piece, Dance of Hope. It could have also been around the time I was leaving New York to come back to Cincinnati, because that took an enormous amount of energy to, to, to leave uh, uh, New York to come to Cincinnati. But like again, it was the best thing I've ever done. So um, this is one of, again, one of my favorite pieces. And, so, and here is just a little, little shape of a character right here that's a part of that whole jumping off and going and doing what you need to do with your, with your life or your career. So this is a, um, uh, a, a wonderful show that I did uh, in uh, Cincinnati at the, at, at the Aronoff. And uh, I had a, a solo show there. And this piece on the front is called a Joyful Dance here. And the two pieces in the back are totem pieces, two of my first totems that I had ever done. They're wonderful. What was really great about this was, number one, I was in the Aronoff, which is like the best venue in, in, um, in Cincinnati. And um, I went in there and I said, oh, I don't want to just use white walls. I want to, I want to change the colors on the wall. Like, whatever, do, do whatever you want to do, Cynthia. And I was like, really? I can do that? So um, I was able to have um, a wonderful um, opening and a wonderful collection of artwork. And, and basically what I wanted, everything I asked for, they let me do. And you already know how good that would feel. Okay, so here's another view of it. What you still see in the, in the totems is a little bit of my fashion. I kind of, they kind of look like they're going down a wall. Um, it was such a big space. They look like they were going down a runway. And here's a smaller piece up here. So to totems with fly away, that's the name of that piece on the wall. And here's a close up of my African fashion totems. Again, all I needed was some drum beats <laughs> in the room. I didn't ask for that. I just thought about that just now. That would have been nice to have that music. But anyway, um, that was the show at the Aronoff in Cincinnati, which was outstanding. This, this piece is called Dreaming. This abstracted piece is called Dreaming. And, and, and basically it's my, my process is a lot of sketching. I talked to you earlier uh, about um, the preparation uh, uh, for drawing croquis and drawing um, abstractions in, in fashion design. So that same skill set I, I use in my work. So literally, I will never ever be able to make all of the work that I sketch because I sketch nearly every day. And so I, I call it kind of a dream state. I call it dreaming. So that I just, when, when I saw this one, I'm like, this is, this is a conglomeration of all, all things I love and all things I sketch. And um, it, this is a, one of my favorite pieces also, Dreaming. Okay. Uh, this one, Blessings, just sold yesterday in the gallery. So I'm excited about that. Yes, 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 yes. So this is called um, Blessings. Um, I have a strong faith. And um, I'm a believer, and I, I I I believe again that you can you can achieve anything that you go after, not that you get it all the time because you you may ask for it and but you receive it in a different way, and so I do believe in blessings, and um and and this one was called blessings. I think it was actually called blessing you. I forgot to put the you on it, and uh, again, like I said, it it sold yesterday from in the gallery. So I'm really excited about that. It's a smaller piece. Um, this one's called Voyage. And one of the things that I like to do is to try new things. I, I, I like to, you hear the, the references, I believe I can fly and uh, what have you. So being able to, vo to, to voyage, to, to go from place to place and to travel is, is something that I love. I do love traveling. Traveling is a, a part of um, gathering up in, information and experiences that help you develop um, as, 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 a, as a person um, as an artist and, and what have you, um, especially uh, as, as an artist, but you, you, are, you are moving and growing when you're going away from what you're familiar at. 
So um, having voyages don't necessarily mean that you have to be this little guy that's traveling over, over this uh, horizon here. It could mean that you're trying a new uh, skill or you're going to work on a, on, on a new job or um, you you uh, so any it could be just an ask an aspirational thing for you so this one's called voyage okay this one is uh it's a very large piece and it's called amazing grace and 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 really it is um it's, it's a piece that i made that is engineered and you see this it has depth to it so you could literally push your, your hand. You might even be able to get your head underneath there because it is bowing out of, it comes uh, configurating off of the wall. And it just, it, it just has, it's a, really a conglomeration of my aesthetic, this piece is. And so you, you, you see the bona finas, uh, you see African symbols, you see florals and uh, shapes and swirls and what have you. And it, it just has an ethereal, context to it. Amazing grace. This is a little baby. It's called seven layer. And so she's small and she's quaint and uh, she has um, uh, beautiful folds there. And this is the seven, she, she's in seven layers here. And she is called seven layer. She's just a small piece. I, I rarely do small pieces, but this one's somewhat small, but somewhat very special. And somebody bought it a long time ago. So yeah, but I love to show it. This one's called Oz Land. And um, it, it just took me to, to, to a place of, again, uh, I like to voyage, I like to dream. I like to go to another place. And I, here goes my little traveler. Sometimes my little traveler is with me here. And um, in this one, I use a, an actual branch and off the branch, I have a, a beaded swirl there. And again, with the multiple colors and, and textures and patterns and structure uh, of the piece, uh, Auslan, it's, it's a, a place that you would like to, to go and be in. This one's called Layers. Uh, it's a, 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 a fabulous piece. And um, 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 again, I, I started, I started with a, a square background, but of course it didn't, it never ends square. I don't know why cat, I don't know. <laughs> some of them do, some of them do end up being square, but anyway, I played around with this and then I, I, I came up with this beautiful shape and I added these wonderful beads here. And basically it just means uh, to me, it means layering and, and layering and layering and layering until I was satisfied. And then I was satisfied and other people liked it too, which is good. This one's called Fragments. And it is a, a beautiful, beautiful little piece that has a, 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 a wonderful, almost jungle-like character to it with three dimensional objects uh, here and also here on this piece. The hand-painted work, fabrications, trimming, my bias trimming. You, you will see most of my work has a wonderful bias trimming and, and also the bias detail does go throughout the work as, well to inform the work. Um, this one was a, um, a quilt uh, done uh, with uh, Dr. a call from Dr. Carolyn Maslumi, and it was uh, debuted in Cincinnati, o Ohio, at the Freedom Center, and and traveled um, all over the world. So again, with Dr. Maslumi's being a part of Dr. Maslumi's group. We as artists were able to expand our horizons more than we could ever do on our own. And our, if you, for instance, if you're in a, in a show like that, the sh your, your piece may leave and you may not see it for three to four to five years because it's traveling around the globe. And this was uh, depicting the underground railroad uh, free freedom stations. And I cleverly made my circles to also have little pockets in them so you could actually stick your hand underneath them. And that would be the, um, the underground part that that is where the, these are the houses, they represents the houses um, that were, um, that people could run to uh, the, in, in the Underground Railroad Freedom Stations, which is an integral part of American history. This one is Reach for the Stars. Uh, one, of, one of my favorite 
Records. Um, this one sold many, many years ago, but I just love it. I wanted to, to, to represent that we can, anyone can reach for your dreams. Anyone can reach, again, aspirational. Anyone can reach for the stars. Don't quit, don't give up, keep it moving. It is just right there beyond your fingertips. Uh, reach for the stars. Okay, we are nearing the end. Uh, this one is African Dance. And this is one of my favorite pieces. Um, it, is in a, it was in a frame. And of course it went up to a show in uh, Columbus and somebody bought it up. And so that was one of the first times I decided I need to also frame these pieces, people will buy them. And so that, that was one that helped me to also put my uh, artwork in frames and they do well in frames. Uh, if any quilter is listening, there are some quilters who have started using frames and uh, it works quite well. Yes. Yes, I, I think hopefully I'm right on time. I wanna give a big thank you to, to being Davis, to, to Kat, to the Rife Gallery, to Amy, and um, for um, um, being a part of this uh, uh, collection, this show that we have. The show is incredible. The show has won an award. Uh, Kat can go into more detail with you in a few minutes, or she can tell you now. The show has won an exceptional award. Can you tell them about it, Kat? Absolutely. So this exhibition, um, as many folks probably know, started at Ebonia Gallery in Dayton, Ohio, and then it traveled and expanded at uh, the Springfield Museum of Art. And while it was there, there was some really excellent programming to complement the phenomenal works. The Ohio Museum Association awarded it best uh, exhibition of 2021, which is a really big deal. There are hundreds of, of museums and galleries around the state that compete for that award. So um, kudos to Bing and all of the artists and to Springfield for putting together wonderful complimentary programming to bring that to fruition. We're really, really pleased to get to carry it here in the Rife Gallery um, after that. And if you have not been to the gallery, please come to the gallery to see the extraordinary exhibit. I am a, a very honored to be with some outstanding artists uh, from around the Ohio area. And I'm um, just, just excited to, to be at the Rife Gallery again. So um, we have a little bit of time. You did great on time and thank you, Cynthia. We have a little bit of time for questions and I actually have some, I, I wanna dive in with first question. You talk a lot about sketching, um, but I recognize within your work, there is call and response to how you are organizing it. So it may not stick directly to the sketch that you have. Can you take us through that a little bit? Of that, like thinking about the, um, non-conformed edge, like not necessarily a rectangle, like you love to push it into organic shapes. Correct. Talk a little bit about that process and why that's important. So the, the organic shape is, uh, it, it, it just comes from um, um, my being. It comes uh, really from fashion design, from the, cur the curvilinear body, the art. We are art, people are art. So to, to me, those shapes are coming from the body. The actual body itself in my croquis in your in all the iteration all the sketches you are always doing heads shoulders arms legs the body is twisting or running going down a runway so that is that is that is my, my you know my genesis from from that and i did i didn't even know it. somebody had to tell me well you know a, a, um a, a, a curator told me well you're probably and i'm like yeah those are my croquis so that's where that comes from, um, um, because I just think we, and also I think we, as people, we're walking art. So I really do believe that we personify. Uh, we we are, we are, are 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 very special. So that's also um, homage to to the human form as well. Thank you, Cynthia. So you're using a word that I'm not familiar with, and other folks may be very familiar, but if you could uh, tell croquis. us what croquis means, yeah. A, a croquis is a fashion design sketch. So when you are asked to, to build a collection, your, your croquis is the actual fashion sketch that, that you would see. Um, and then if it was made, if the sketch was made into a garment, then later you would see that on a person in a, in a, in a photo but it first starts as a, a drawing exercise. Everything comes from the, found, the foundations at University of Cincinnati. We all had to go through a foundations program for that whole year. 
I didn't, we didn't get any fashion design. We just got the basic foundations of how to draw your perspectives and whatever like that. So it was like, I want to, we want to do fashion design. You had to wait because you had to, you had to learn the, the basics of design. That foundation. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So uh, another question for you. Um, and this is going to sound like a simple question, but there's a lot that comes behind it, is uh, why fabric? Why fabric? I I was, uh, I think that was pretty, that was an easy one, Um, because I, I was designing in fabrications. I was designing with, uh, with, with my garments that I made uh, for clothing, that was fabric. So that was a medium that I was quite comfortable with. Yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. It, so, it sounds, but it isn't. Yeah, I'm quite comfortable with fabric. Um, and, and, it, and it can't be plain fabric. It has to be very different. <laughs> my fabric, my choices of fabric are, are very intentional. I, I do use a, a lot of reference to, to um, African-American culture, African culture, um, uh, indigenous, indigenous cultures. Um, but I also sometimes will mix it with something that's almost haute couture, which would be some kind of, wonderful gold or, 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 or something that would not be in, in that culture. So I am always um, uh, collaging, stitching, m- mixing uh, together. And, and, and it's, it's a formula that you come up with just like any other artist will come up with a palette that they typically use or what have you, and you, you kind of get used to it. And, and so as well with the fabrications. What was, what was very different is, is that when one day Dr. Mazumi said, well, you know, Cynthia, you, you, you got to start doing something a little different. You know, you, why don't you just make your own fabrics? And I, so I started doing that dyeing, making my own uh, uh, fabric uh, colors and arrangements and what have you to differentiate because we all shop, you know, somewhere in the same area. So I had to, you know, especially as, as the artwork uh, began to be collected and, you know, put in museums and then ultimately in the Smithsonian, which is amazing. I'm still giddy about that right now but um you you do you do learn and you do iterate and I think that that's very exciting about an artist to, to not be not be stagnant to continue to to move and develop and not get too comfortable with a particular medium still begin to stretch it um and and go beyond whatever that expectation is because you've already done that can I answer your question? Absolutely, yes. So uh, another thing that, you know, folks, when you come and see this exhibition, what's really delightful about Cynthia's work is that um, you are really rewarded by taking your time with it. There's so many layers. There's such wonderful craft. And that's something that I find really phenomenal about um, quilt art in general is like, you think about a painting versus a quilt and, you know, there's a paint stroke and a quilt, it's that same stroke, but the intention and time behind that is just out of this world. So to think about that, that not only the hand skills, the planning, um, the choice of fabric and layering there, it's really, uh, it's just a delight and it, it's very hard not to touch them. (laughs) You want to very, very badly, which I think is a sign of of great artwork, anything that like makes you gravitate towards them. Mm -hmm. Um, So thank you. Uh, I think we're, we're right at time. And Cynthia, this was such a pleasure. It's always a delight to hear you talk about your work and um, just a joy to be with you. So thank you for sharing your inspirations and your your process and so much of your work. Um, This is Cynthia Lockhart as a part of our programming for the Black Life as Subject Matter to Exhibition. Um, I'd also like to give a special special thank you to curator Willis Bing Davis for putting together such a great exhibition. Awesome. um, To the participating artists as well. and to the Ohio Arts Council's board, the Ohio legislature, the governor who supports the OIC, this great space, and of course, Ohio artists. Thank you all for joining us. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.